What's good everyone, my name is Mac and you're watching Mac It Easy. And in this video, we're talking about how to build a custom sliding barn wood door for your home. So let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about the materials. Now my door size was about 110 inches by 44 inches. The door opening itself was about 40 inches. Um, so I have an overhang of about two inches on both sides. So you would have to modify the lumber that you need to purchase accordingly based upon your door size. But in, in my case, it was five pieces of one inch by 10 inch by 10 feet. This is for the body of the door. Three pieces of one inch by four inch by six feet. And one piece of one inch by five inch by four feet. Now the last two are for the design that you choose and will uh, vary accordingly. Then you also need the pre-stain and stain of your choice. And then you would need to also buy the sliding door hardware which could be purchased from any of the big box stores. So what you want to do is lay down the 1 by 10 inch boards in the pattern of the door. This way you will be able to identify what side of each board will become the front of the door and what side goes at the back. You would also want to mark each of these boards by a number so that you remember when you are gluing them which board goes where. I would also recommend that you mark each of these boards by a T or a B as in a top or the bottom so that you remember which side of the board is the top. Once you have marked these boards, the next step is to join the boards. Now in my case, I'm using both glue and pocket holes to join the boards. You could use biscuits if you wanted to do that. Remember that the pocket holes need to go in the back side of the door, not the front. Here I'm using a Craig jig to make these holes. If you had other tools or other mechanisms to make these pocket holes, you could use that as well. Depending upon the size of your door, you would need to decide how many holes you need to drill. In my case, I drilled these holes about 18 inches apart. Once all your pocket holes are done, it's time to glue up the boards. It probably is easier to glue up these boards two at a time and then join the bigger pieces together. And that's what I'm doing here. And here's my helper who loves buttering up these boards with glue. One important thing to note here is that the boards need to be flush with each other and they are on a level surface. I'm putting here some clamps to make sure that the two boards are flush and then I'll drive in the pocket hole screws. Once I had joined the boards using glue, screws and lots of clamps, I went back to remove the squeeze out of the glue from these boards. Uh, this is helpful because if you do it now, you won't have to spend a lot of time later when you are sanding. Here I flip the board and do the same on the other side as well. Now all you have to do is repeat the same with the other boards and then join the larger pieces together. Here I moved the setup to the ground so that I could do the larger glue up. I'm using pipe clamps here which also allow the surface to be level and then your boards to be flush. Once you have joined all of these boards, this becomes the base of your door. And now comes planing and sanding. Here I'm using an electric planer to plane the boards. It helps in removing any extra glue that came up and also it helps in leveling up any uneven surface at the joints. And then comes sanding. I used a 60 grit sandpaper for the initial pass and I believe I did 80 grit and 120 grit after that. Between these sandings I used a tack cloth to remove any dust that accumulated there. After initial sanding, I filled all the pocket holes using wood putty and gave it another round of sanding. Now the next step here is to cut the door in the dimensions that you need. 
so that you can start gluing or attaching the outside edges of the door. It was night time and I was still at it so apologies for the quality of the video here. But I was having fun. I used a circular saw to cut the edges here and then sanded the sides to make them look nice. Here I'm using a straight edge to screw and glue in one of the sides of the door. I'm using the 1 inch by 4 inch lumber. And here I'm cutting one of the sides of the door. This was probably the hardest part because the depth of my blade uh, in my circular saw could not cut the whole thing. So I had to come back using a jigsaw to cut the remaining part. Next I attached the top, bottom and the center pieces of the door. Um, nothing special here, just using glue and screw again to attach these pieces. I'm using the 1 by 5 inch piece of lumber here for the center divide so that it looks slightly thicker than the edges. Now here's probably where your build will differ from mine. We had chosen a chevron in the front of the door and keep the back of the door as plain. Now if you decided to do something different you will have to switch this part here. But in my case, the chevron build was pretty simple. All I'm doing here is measuring the angles at which I need to cut the board so that it fits in that square. Alright, it fit nicely and it was approved by the inspector. Repeat the same thing on the other square and your chevron would be ready. So here the door is pretty much done. What I'm doing here is cleaning up the edges using a sander and a planer to make it look nicer. And here is one last round of sanding to make everything look nice and clean. One thing I forgot to mention earlier was that you would also probably need another piece of lumber that goes onto your wall and gets attached to the studs on your wall. I'll come back to that later on why we need that. But for now let's go ahead and stain the door. In our case we decided to use a combination of white and chalkboard grey to stain the door. Here I'm doing a first coat of pre-stain using a rag. You could use a brush, I just find using a rag much easier. And here is how the door looks after the stain. We did all the edges and the chevron in the chalkboard grey and the rest of the door in white. The back side of the door we just did the stripes of grey and white. Looks pretty neat. And here I'm applying a coat of polyurethane to the door. Now it helps in two ways. One, it gives a little bit of shine to the door and two, it also acts as a protective coating on the door. Now we are going to put this door on our master bath so that protective coating would be helpful. Now this is the door hardware that I'm going to be using and I got this from Amazon. Follow the instructions that came with your hardware to attach it to the door. Now let's talk about the piece of lumber that I mentioned earlier. Now if you see here, your door hardware comes with a strip of metal on which your rollers ride. The strip has holes in it which are supposed to align with the studs on your wall. Now that may not always be the case. And that's why you need a strip of lumber, kind of a backing board that gets attached to the studs. And now your metal strip that came with your hardware can sit on top of this piece of lumber and gets attached to it without having to worry about whether the holes line with the studs or not. 
So here you see me attaching that backer board or the strip of lumber to the wall. It is already stained white. The metal strip that came with the hardware is gonna sit on top of this. And here are some of the final shots of the door. And that's it folks. Hope you liked this video. And if you did, please do leave me a comment and like the video. Also don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And until then, take it easy.